Sure. Uh, so I'm, I'm Charles Guillemet. I'm CTO at Ledger. So uh, basically, I'm, I'm in charge of uh, technology uh, in, in general. Uh, my background is uh, cryptography and security. Uh, those are topics I'm interested in since I'm 12. Um, and I worked in this, uh, in this industry for uh, my whole career. I discovered Bitcoin in 2011. Uh, at this time, a friend of mine was uh, mining uh, with his own computer. And he, he was talking about Bitcoin like every day. So... At some point, I decided to have a look at what Bitcoin is. And I studied the cryptography, the technology behind Bitcoin. And I, I was amazed by the technology. But I remember I told him something like, oh, the technology is amazing, but I don't get what's the use case. It's, it's not useful. So when I joined Ledger in 2017, he made fun of me, asking me if I finally understood uh, why Bitcoin is, uh, is interesting. And... And I finally understood what I really like in, in Bitcoin and crypto is the permissionless aspect. You don't have to ask the permission to anyone uh, for uh, owning your assets and, to, and, and for using them. And it's possible for, because of two things. The first thing is uh, a decentralized consensus that allows uh, censorship resistance. And the second thing is self-custody. Uh, Self-custody means you own your value and no one can, can do anything. Like you are, you are on your own and you manage your value. And what Ledger is doing is providing tools uh, for users to, um, to implement their self-custody in security. What Ledger is, uh, is doing is, uh, is um, we are designing and manufacturing hardware wallets. So this is a piece of hardware that allows you to manage your keys. As we say in the field, uh, not your keys, not your coin. Um, and uh, Ledger is very famous for that. We also have uh, different software with uh, Ledger Live that allows you to manage your crypto, to buy, sell, swap, stake, earn, all of this. And we also have a B2B offering, which is a little less known in, in the space, uh, but which is, a, which is a very, very interesting uh, product. So, as I explained, like self-custody is really important. If you are not in self-custody, you are not in crypto. Without self-custody, like crypto is not really interesting. Like uh, if you have a Bitcoin on, you, uh, on your Revolut account, it's not really like being in crypto. Being in crypto means owning your value. And when you own your value, uh, that means that you have to manage your keys. So creating a Bitcoin or Ethereum wallet is quite simple. You just have to generate a pair of keys, one, uh, one public key and one private key. Your public key, you can share it to anyone. It's essentially your address that allows you to um, receive funds, to connect your wallet and so on. And you also have a private key that allows you to prove that you own your assets and to, uh, to the signature when you want to send transaction and this kind of thing. And if you lose this private key, you lose your funds. If, if an attacker gets an access to uh, your private key, it's, it can make a transaction and drain your wallet. So security is really, really important in, um, in, in this area. And this is really what we are doing at Ledger, providing uh, the right tools in order to secure your assets. So we, we can see that the market is growing fast. Um, and newcomers they, that enter in the space, they don't, they don't understand everything in the space at first. This is normal. This is a, a new thing. This is, a, this is a little bit complex. So what we see is um, a large number of users, uh, mass adoption is coming. And mass adoption starts with Revolut, starts with a centralized exchange and so on. <clears throat> and at some point, the user understands that self-custody is important. And then he will use uh, different types of services. Or he, he can start with a software wallet. And as soon as you have a si significant value and you don't want to lose it, then you will use a hardware wallet. Hardware wallet are, are still a relatively um, smaller uh, market share if you compare to uh, software and, and centralized exchanges. Uh, <clears throat> nonetheless, as soon as you have value, you will use a hardware wallet. And, and by the way, uh, Ledger is securing more than 20% of the total market cap. So this is, uh, this is quite big. I think the main reason for uh, Ledger success uh, are you have two main reasons. Uh, the first one is I think we have the most secure product on the market. 
And as security is really important, um, this is a this is a, a major differentiator. And the second one is is the fact that we are supporting a very very large number of assets, a very large number of protocol, and uh, and and this is a uh, very important for uh, newcomers because they want to have Bitcoin maybe, but they also want to have like a um, a new shiny uh, protocol, a new shiny coin, and and we are supporting most of them, um, and. In order to do that, what we did is to have a platform strategy. So the idea is um, on our hardware wallet, you can load different apps. Uh, Bitcoin is an application, Ethereum is another, and, and we have like many different apps. And this is an open platform. So that means that any foundation, any blockchain foundation can build the support for the app on Ledger. And this is how we are able to support all this blockchain, all this protocol, and all these tokens. This is the same for Ledger Live. Ledger Live is the uh, software that allows you to connect your device to your computer or to your uh, phone. We are supporting again uh, plenty of um, new, uh, plenty of protocols, plenty of uh, coins and tokens, and um, and this is this is made possible by the open platform st strategy that we implemented in the past. Uh, in Ledger Live, you can buy, sell, swap, stake, earn, have bank banking cards, and all these services are really uh, compelling for for our users. We also recently um, uh, launched a service that's called uh, Ledger Recover, because when you uh, are in self custody, you need to manage your keys, you need to manage your backup. Uh, they, they are these are the, the 24 hours. Uh, you need to uh, create a backup of these 24 hours just in case your um, your device fails. And it's, uh, it can be a little bit uh, stressful for users. So that's why we launched uh, Ledger Recover. And Ledger Recover is a, is a way to, <clears throat> to have a decentralized backup uh, for your seed, just in case you lose your backup or you lose your device. You can recover just by proving uh, that you are the one you pretend, you pretend to be. Um, and finally, what we are working on is uh, really to improve the user experience, to remove as, as much friction uh, as we can. And this is the major focus for us in the near future. First of all, I think there, there was some misunderstanding about the service, about uh, how our Ledger devices are working also. Um, so let, let me explain a little bit. So first of all, this service is optional and it's a paid service. You have to pay uh, 10 USD per month. And as long as you don't decide to use it, uh, you won't interact with this service at all. Um, if ever you decide to use it, then you <clears throat> will Choose only on Ledger on Live to uh, subscribe to the service. You will connect uh, your account, and then you will connect your device on um, uh, in Ledger Live, and uh, Ledger, le, your device will prompt you: uh, Do you want to create the backup of Ledger Recover? And then, if you accept, then the the recover recover process uh, will start. And this process is quite simple. Inside the device, uh, your your seed is protected. And the backup process is simple. It, it takes the seed, it encrypts the seed, and then it shards the, the seed into three different shards. And the shards are sent securely using Secure Channel, which is a, a, a cryptographic uh, protocol that allows you to send the shards securely to different HSM. HS, HSM stands for Hardware Security Model. And these shards will be uh, sent to this HSM, and this HSM will um, save them uh, securely. In order to recombine your seed, uh, you need to prove uh, that you are the, the one um, that you that you pretend to be. So there is a, there is a ID verification. Uh, you need also to connect to your account and so on. And after that, uh, you will be able to recover uh, two different shards uh, from two different partners from the HSM, and they will be recombined uh, on the device uh, securely. So this is really how, how it works. The service is perfectly uh, secure and. And if you don't want to use it because you are not at ease, because like you want to be very strict on your self custody, you want be, to be the only one with uh, access to your seed, you you can decide not to use uh, Ledger Recover, and it's perfectly fine. And also, like we, we, as we are using three different partners and three different HSM, there is no single enti entity that can access to your seed. Um, you, you you still are the only one. Uh, with the access to your seed. So this is really how, how it works. And yeah, I think there was a, some misunderstanding in the space. Also the crypto Twitter, like uh, the, the drama a little bit. So this is, um, I think this is the main reason why we had this um, 
this little drama, I would say. Yeah, sure. So as I mentioned, we have our, our open platform strategy. So we are enabling different foundation, different blockchain foundation to be supported on Ledger devices. So we have a very close relationship uh, with them. So this is something really important for us. Uh, also, there are other stakeholders such as wallets. If you use MetaMask, you can use MetaMask with your device. So we have a, a close relationship with them to make sure that they can use our uh, device SDK uh, to properly support our device. Um, also, we have close relationship uh, with dApps uh, because when you interact with Uniswap, with um, OpenSea, with all these dApps, uh, you want to be sure that you can um, uh, clearly sign uh, your transaction and, and that you don't blind sign a hash. So we have a close relationship with them. And finally, uh, we have close relationship with different partners uh, in order to provide to our, our users uh, different services. Uh, when you uh, swap uh, Ethereum against Bitcoin on Ledger Live, we don't provide this service. Uh, this is uh, uh, some, of, some of our partners that are providing these services. So we are really a little bit in the middle of uh, all this industry, and we have, we have a very close relationship with uh, all these partners, and it takes a lot of time. And this is also why I'm here today in, in Denver to, um, to discuss with uh, the different partners and, and stakeholders. And um, yeah, this is really exciting. So we are still in very early, I think. Uh, we are still in the beginning of um, a big revolution. And this is normal that the, the, for now, there is no specific regulation for uh, Web3, for, for crypto. There are only a few countries started to uh, regulate. And it starts to come in Europe, it starts to come in, uh, in, in the US. It's probably necessary to have specific rules. At the same time, these rules uh, must not um, uh, prevent innovation because this is a very innovative, innovative space. And um, I understand that regulators want to protect users and it's necessary. So if the laws are enabled to protect users, it's cool, but they mustn't uh, prevent innovation. And this is also why we need to discuss with uh, these regulators in order to explain uh, how it works and, uh, and how we can protect users without uh, preventing innovation. Yeah, I think like, this cycle will be, uh, will be quite different from the previous cycle. <clears throat> in the previous cycle, uh, the number of users uh, increased a lot. We started to see a new, <coughs> new application, new dApps. But the problem was that blockchain does not scale. And, and for instance, um, uh, in the last cycle, OpenSea was uh, released. OpenSea is not a very complex blockchain, but the usage of OpenSea was quite high. And as Ethereum uh, blockchain does not scale, it was not um, possible to sustain uh, the number of transactions and so on. So it created a lot of problems high fees and such kind of thing. And in the meantime, uh, the ecosystem built a different infrastructure, mostly L2, uh, in order to support this uh, scalability. And now we are really in a very different situation where this infra exists. We have built plenty of scalability, scalability solution with different blockchain and also uh, plenty of different L2s. And we are in the situation where we have the infra, we have the scalability and, and now what is missing is the is the um, the upper layer, like the dApps. We we don't have so many dApps so far. Um, mostly we have uh, DeFi uh, dApps, and they are very strong and very important. Um, but now plenty of new use cases are unlocked by the fact that we reached the scalability point, and we will be able to see experiences uh, with gaming. Uh, so it will be possible to uh, implement gaming on chain with uh, more interaction with the chain. So this is a, a very exciting um, uh, new vertical in these cases. I'm also excited by uh, everything related to uh, self-sovereign identity. You can own your identity, prove the, that you are yourself in a sovereign ma manner. Uh, I'm pretty excited by this. I'm not sure it will come very soon, but uh, we are in the situation where the infrastructure, the technology makes this possible. Now there is a question of standard, uh, which standard will win and so on. So we'll see. I'm, I'm very excited because we now have the infra and um, now anything is possible. Like uh, just a matter of imagination. What kind of apps do you want to build on this infra? And um, yeah, we're really excited by this.
Yeah, again, I think what, what new users need to understand is that crypto is different. Like you, you can't think that crypto is like stocks. This is something different. And the real value proposition, the uniqueness of crypto lies on the fact that you can really own it and be a sovereign. You can be your own bank. You can, be, um, you can own your value without any intermediary, without anyone preventing you to use your, your value. And this is very powerful. And um, yeah, I like, like people to understand this because this is really the, the big value proposition for, for crypto. Yeah, the, the fact that you don't have to ask the permission to anyone and no one can steal your value. Like uh, when you have uh, money on the bank, you have to ask the permission to the bank to use your, your money. And this is, this is your, your money, but you have to ask the permission to the bank. So if you are, if you are in a... In a, cool, in, a, in a country where banks uh, can be trusted and government can be trusted, it's kind of okay, it kind of works. If you, if you live in uh, Argentina, if you live in uh, Africa, this is definitely not the case. They can't trust government, they can't trust um, the, the banks. And, and even for us, we, we are trusting the banks, but we don't know, maybe they will disappear, maybe. So this is, this is something like with crypto, you can be on your own. You can be the, the master of your destiny, the master of your value. And this is very powerful, I think. And yeah, I think um, be curious, uh, stay safe. <clears throat> also, there are plenty of uh, new shiny projects that promise you like a uh, very big uh, <clears throat> APY, very big um, gain. So be a little bit um, skeptical because uh, the, there are also some scams in the ecosystem. So be, uh, be careful about that. Let's go crypto Korea.